the northern sea route will receive support from space. Domestic satellites help develop meteorological sovereignty in the Arctic. But about that right after we list the most interesting events that happened in our country during the week. So, in Severo de Vinsk at Sevmash, planned a solemn ceremony of hoisting naval flags on the nuclear-powered submarine cruisers, Emperor Alexander III, and Krasnoyarsk took place. Emperor Alexander III is a Borea project ship, equipped with modern missile and torpedo weapons, navigation, radio-technical and hydroacoustic armament systems. The Krasnoyarsk of the Yasin M project has improved the element base of radio-electronic weapon complexes, modernized equipment and materials. Ilyich Iron and Steelworks, the largest metallurgical enterprise in the Donbass, has started operating in Mariupol. Three workshops have been launched, with more than 3,000 people working in production. The products are sent to rebuild other buildings of the enterprise, as well as to the destroyed towns and villages of the DNR. Next Touch launched mass production of motherboards on domestic processors. In 2024, the resident will place most of the volume of motherboard production on the production lines of the Pachotniki site. That's about 30,000 pieces a year. When developing the boards, the company focused on maximum product localization. Production of trucks at the former Volvo plant in Kaluga has been launched. In 2024, the Kaluga machine building enterprise plans to produce 2,000 domestic trucks of the next lineup. The plant's capacity is up to 10,000 trucks per year. A new bridge across the Ziya River at the approach to the capital of Priamuria is open for traffic. The Ziya Bridge is one of the largest infrastructure projects in the Amur region in recent decades. Its total length is more than 10 kilometers. Of these, the bridge portion is about 2 kilometers. The bridge was commissioned a year ahead of schedule. The Buran plant, which will produce import substituting equipment for oil wells, was opened in Chelyabinsk. It will produce liner hangers, packers, cementing tooling, couplings for multi-stage hydraulic fracturing, and perforated filters. In the near future, the enterprise will switch to around-the-clock mode. Vancor RN started construction of a pipeline crossing across the Yenisei River for the Vostok oil project. The new oil pipeline crossing is a unique engineering and technical construction with a length of 5 km 800 meters. It will be laid by trenching along the Yenisei riverbed and will be part of the large-scale 770 km Vancor Payaka Bukta North Oil Pipeline. The new flagship center of the Botkin City Clinical Hospital and the Moscow Urology Center created on its basis were opened. With the introduction of the new two centers, the hospital gained 13 state-of-the-art research and practice centers. The building is designed to receive up to 200 emergency patients per day, who can receive the full range of necessary care during the first 24 hours of hospitalization. United Engine and Construction Corporation has delivered the first batch of import substituted spark plugs for the SAM-146 engine to Superjet 100 aircraft operators. The development has passed the necessary tests certified by Rosaviation and can be used in power plants instead of foreign analogs. Production of new spark plugs is located at the Ufa Aggregate Production Association. Now let's return to the Northern Sea Route, which will receive support from space. Russia has completed the creation of a specialized satellite constellation designed to receive weather information from the Arctic regions. The launch of the second Arctica M satellite into orbit is important not only for the accuracy of weather forecasts, but also for the functioning of the most important transportation artery of the northern sea route. In recent years, the quality of weather forecasts by Russian meteorologists has increased manifold. Nowadays, thanks to both continuous information from satellites and the weather radar system, it is possible to predict the weather both within a day and for several days ahead with a high probability. And the Russian meteorological satellite constellation plays an important role in this. The first Arctica M Meteo satellite was launched in 2021. In May of this year, the deployment of three more specialized Electro L Meteo satellites in orbit was completed. Despite their different names, they are very similar spacecraft working to capture weather information around the world. For their creation back in 2005 Lavochkin Research and Production Association developed a satellite platform, Navigator, specially adapted for astrophysical and meteorological research. All of these vehicles are meteorological, but Arctica M, as its name suggests, specializes in transmitting weather information from polar latitudes. And now on December 16 from Baikonur Cosmodrome there was a successful launch of Soyuz 2.1B launch vehicle with Arctica M spacecraft No. 2 on board. 
it will strengthen the capabilities of the Russian satellite meteorological grouping, first of all in terms of regularity of data transmission. By the way, the Russian space observatories SPECTR-R and SPECTR-RG are assembled on the same platform. Its distinguishing feature is the large volume of fuel for spacecraft attitude correction 357 kg of hydrazine, almost a quarter of the satellite's weight. The main instrument of the target equipment of this type of spacecraft is a multiband scanning device of hydrometeorological support. It is capable of taking images in three visible channels and seven infrared channels. This allows you to track the appearance and movement of clouds, thunderstorm fronts, cyclones and other similar atmospheric phenomena. The satellite measures the temperature of the land and sea surface and the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. All of this provides meteorologists with the data they need to make the most accurate weather forecasts possible. The visible resolution of the satellite scanner is 1 km per pixel, the infrared resolution is 4 km per pixel. Yes, it's not very detailed, but it's enough for meteorology. But from geostationary orbit, the satellite can see the entire globe. You can look at the resulting images in near real time on this site. In addition, the Artica-M carries on board systems that ensure the transmission of emergency signals from vessels in distress. The system of Electro-L and Artica-M spacecraft is truly unique. It is capable of providing continuous operational hydrometeorological monitoring of the entire territory of Russia and the Arctic regions with stable quality and suitable frequency of observations. Low-orbit satellites have traditionally been used to observe polar regions, but they cannot provide observation frequencies comparable to geostationary satellites. That is why a unique technological solution, Artica-M, quasi-geostationary spacecraft on highly elliptical orbits of Molnia type was realized. Most spacecraft operate in near-circular circular orbits. The Molnia orbit, where the Arctic-M satellites are located, is another matter. It represents a strongly elongated ellipse. At its perigee, the closest point to Earth, the satellite flies at an altitude of only 1,000 km, and at apogee over 39,000 km. What's beyond geostationary orbit? That's right when Arctic-M is far from Earth, it's taking pictures of the Arctic regions of the globe. Why the Arctic? The fact is that in Russia it is characteristic of weather formation exactly in the northern regions. In winter, large cold anticyclones that form there come to us from the Arctic. Besides, the northern sea route, the most important transportation artery for our country, passes in these latitudes. And knowing the weather map is very important for the crews of ships traveling along the northern sea route. That's what Arctic-M works for. Thus, the constellation of these satellites will ensure reliable operation of the most important transportation route for Russia. The orbit in which Arctica-M will operate is important in a number of ways. During about half of its 12-hour orbit, the satellite passes over the northern hemisphere at altitudes comparable to those of a geostationary orbit and is able to image the entire disk of the Earth at high frequency, albeit from a somewhat unfamiliar angle. The shooting equipment on these is pretty much the same, adjusted for the specifics of shooting, as on Electro-L, which is important enough. Since Artica-M is surveyed for 6.5 hours out of 12 on each turn, two active apparatuses operating in counterphase are required for uninterrupted 24 by 7 imaging. With the launch of the Artica-M spacecraft number 2, this configuration will be achieved. So it will be possible to talk about full system deployment. With the planned launch of another Electro-L in 2024, Russia is systematically realizing a stable constellation capable of providing meteorological data 24 hours a day from anywhere on Earth. And this is important not only to regular residents, but also to military, rescue, support services, and virtually any transportation professional. It's a matter of national security, scientific research and comfort of life. An important advantage of the satellite constellation is its entirely domestic origin and control. Back in March, Roscosmos announced that the constellation of Electro-L satellites allows Russia to finally abandon its use of meteorological data obtained from abroad. The joint operation of the Electro-L and Artica-M constellation will further strengthen Russian space and meteorological sovereignty, now with a focus on receiving data from polar latitudes.